Today's match is brought to you by Direct Waste Management Limited and Orca Telecom. Well, there's the Wick Academy mascot, Norrie the Scotty, showing Alan Farker and the Academy players how to do their pre-match lunges and stretches. Nice work there, Norrie. There's Sam Coghill, today's match mascot. It's tiring having your photo taken, isn't it? Morag Perry referees this one. Wick Academy versus Bucky Thistle. We're at the Scottish Highland Football League's most northerly ground this afternoon. On a beautiful day, it has to be said, in Wick. Beautiful autumnal sunshine bathing Harmsworth Park. There's an early opportunity for Bucky. It's a good cross by Neil Davidson. And the Jags showing their intention early on. There's Ross Allen. And Ross Allen chases his own ball there. And Christopher Hegarty does well to tidy up for the away side. Both these sides fairly evenly matched, both currently mid-table in the Scottish Highland Football League. Both have aspirations to be in that top six, though. Here's Davey Allen, last year's top scorer with 24 goals. Jay Chain has done well there to hold his progress up, but he's cut it back from McCaddy. McCaddy just couldn't wrap his foot around it. Here's Hegarty for Bucky with a long ball into the box. That's headed away by the Wick Academy captain, Alan Farker. It'll come back into the six-yard box from Sean Woods, but that's well collected by Sean McCarthy. Here's Scott Adams. Monroe, nice flick to Liam Baxter. This is nice play by Bucky Thistle on that far side. Scott Adams there, looking for the run of Donny Monroe. But it's tidied up by Wick Academy. Scott Adams, just 17 years old, by far and away the youngest member of this Bucky Thistle starting 11 today. There are some experienced players in the Jags side. Six of the starting 11 are over the age of 30. It's a clever free kick by Wick Academy. There's James Pickles. He's watched closely by young Jay Chain for the Jags. And Jay Chain does really well there. Really well by the youngster, Jay Chain. He's found Andy Lowe as well. It'll come back to Chain, and his first time ball will find Liam Baxter in a bit of space here. Baxter with a first time shot. It was worth a try. McCarthy's kick barely reaches the halfway line. There is a brisk breeze at Harmsworth Park this afternoon. There's Ross Allen for Wick. It's a good ball to find McCaddy. And that's an even better ball to find Davy Allen! Davy Allen puts Wick Academy in front. A coolly taken finish by Davy Allen, but what a ball by Richard McCaddy. It was a great ball from Ross Allen. One touch from Richard McCaddy. Donny Monroe could get nowhere near him, and it gave him the chance to turn and spray a beautiful 40 yard pass straight into the run of Davy Allen, who didn't need a second invitation to tuck that past Darren Strong. And Wick Academy have got their tails up here. Davy Allen could be in again. It's off Darren Strong's post and McCaddy couldn't follow up. Richard McCaddy so close to adding to his goal tally for Wick Academy. Over 100 goals now for the club. Seems to be rewriting records almost every week. Stewart with a the header. There's Liam Baxter. That's nice feet by Donny Munro, an experienced head in the heart of that Bucky midfield. The ball comes in as Andy Lowe with a chest, and he does well to take it down, but his shot was never troubling Sean McCarthy. Liam Baxter with a cross. This ball just hanging up in the air. It's been the story of this first half, really. Just the quality of the final ball for both sides, really. Wick Academy have had the best of the opportunities and find themselves 1-0 up. There's McRae. Floats one up for Scott Adams to head on target. Decent header by Young Adams. There's James Pickles and a big shoulder charge on him by Jay Chain. Play on, says Morag Piri. That was legal. Let's hope that James Pickles is okay for Wick Academy. He had a bad shoulder injury last season. Well, James Pickles is up. And now he's down again. <laughs> He'll know he's been in a game this afternoon, that's for sure. James Pickles, the Orkney lad. 
Bucky have a free kick with Andy Lowe. It's cleared by Weir. And Sean Wood shot. Sailing high, wide and handsome. Weir's played in McCaddy here. And that's good goalkeeping by Darren Strong. Donny Munro in strong on Gary Weir. And there was a little bit of afters there. And Morag Piri trying to split things up. And then Graham Stewart getting involved as well. Piri blowing a whistle furiously. Trying to sort things out here. Let's have a look at this again. Donny Munro slid in on Gary Weir. But Gary Weir left his boots trailing on Munro. He sees yellow. But Morag Piri spotted something else here. And she goes over to Graham Stewart. And it's that there. It's that little step on Gary Weir's foot. Brilliant spot by Morag Piri. That's why she's one of the most experienced referees in Scotland. Refereeing women's World Cup qualifiers and European championships all around the world. Sam Mackay's done really well there for Wick Academy. As we approach half-time, Richard McCaddy's made a good run and he's been found. It will be a corner to Wick Academy. In the last few seconds of this first half, it's a short one to Davy Allen. Twists and turns. It's a cross away. And that's it for the first half. Well, one would imagine that Gordon Connolly and Gary Hake will have asked for a bit more from their players in the second half. The first wasn't exactly a classic game of football. Wick Academy have started brightly here. Shot from Sam Mackay was cleared for a corner. That's headed away. And a bit of a scramble there in the Bucky box. And it will be another corner. Well, the rain's eased off, but the winds remain. And that one's hanging. And Darren Strong did really well there in a busy penalty box. And that's good distribution by the Jags keeper. Scott Adams has changed from red boots to yellow boots in the second half. Probably longer studs. So there's a bit more moisture in the turf. They seem to be working for him. That was a nice move by the youngster on the far side. Skipping past two players. As Weir, ever willing to make a run, gets a good cross into the Bucky box. And Bucky Thistle make a bit of a meal of trying to clear this. Michael Stephen with a curling effort, but just over Darren Strong's bar. Weir and McRae tussling for the ball in midfield. And McRae wins that one for Bucky. Low does well, finds Sean Wood with a good ball to Donny Munro, and that's first time to Liam Baxter, who never really got hold of his shot. It was in winter, Woolies looking for something to jump up and down about. It's that time of year, isn't it, when the scarves come out? As Davy Allen finds McCaddy, in turn finds Sam Mackay, comes on to his left foot, Mackay. Decent effort that from Mackay, who holds the unique honour of being the only player in the league to score a goal for his country at schoolboy and semi-professional level. Sam Mackay. Here's Davy Allen for Wick. Beats one, beats two, beats three. He's done really well here. Davy Allen cuts the ball back and there was no one in black and white running in on that. It deserved more. Great play by Davy Allen. Wick Academy have recycled this. There's McCaddy, Davy Allen, and Grant Campbell's been given time and space to pick out a cross, and he picks out Sam Mackay with a diving header, and that was inches past Darren Strong's post. There's Wood. Finds Baxter, and lays it off for Scott Adams. Andy Lowe's making a run into the box, and Adams finds him, and that could fall for Davidson. Just trickles past the post. Bucky Thistle's best opportunity so far of this second half. Still a goal behind here at Harmsworth Park. Gary Weir's made a run and Allen's found him. Darren Strong comes out to meet him. And the ball just trickles out of play. And that's the last action from Gary Weir. He's replaced by the big Polish striker, Lukasz Garuzel. Garuzel goes straight up to spearhead that Wick Academy attack. He's a real physical presence. Didn't have the greatest seasons by his own admission in front of goal last time round. So far this season, though, he's started three, come on as a sub for three, and found the net three times. So, a promising start to the new campaign for Lucas Garuzel. Bucky Thistle just struggling to get out of their own half just at the moment. Michael Stephen well forward. There's Garuzel. 
And Davy Allen and Michael Stevens continued his run into the box, and there is Stephen. And Bucky Thistle just clear their lines in time. Sam Mackay with a long range effort. Well, the home side have had the better of the opportunities again in the second half, but as long as the scoreline remains 1 0, there's a chance for the Jags to get back in this. Liam Baxter will chase down this from Sean McCarthy. Still lots of fight in this Bucky Thistle side. Graham Stewart looking for Liam Baxter and Stevens missed it and Baxter could be in here. Liam Baxter for Bucky Thistle cuts the ball back for Andy Lowe and a bobble just meant that he miscued his shot. Bucky still have it though, the ball's back in the box. It's a good header away by Kyle Gould, the substitute only as far as Donny Munro who hits one. Well Andy Lowe's still shaking his head, he can't quite believe his luck just as he was about to pull the trigger. And a bobble in front of him. And he miscued his shot completely. That could have seen Bucky Thistle on level terms. Meanwhile, at the other end, here's Ross Allen with a 25-yarder. Darren Strong parries it. It's cleared away by the Bucky defence. It takes a ricochet, but it's back in the hands of Darren Strong. It's Garuzel. Good control. It was a late tackle on the pole. Morag Piri blows up for a free kick to Wick Academy. Mackay floats one into the box, headed by Garuzel, and Darren Strong gets it all wrong, and the ball's gone into the back of the net. Well, Darren Strong has had a nightmare there. He got his hands all wrong. Let's see that again. Mackay floats the ball into the box. It's a fairly straightforward header by Garuzel. There wasn't much of a challenge on him. But as Darren Strong went to grab the ball, he seemed to get his hands all wrong. Liam Baxter from fully 35, 40 yards. Not troubling Sean McCarthy. Wick have brought on one of their youngsters here with a two-goal cushion. There's Alan Hughes, an exciting young prospect, and he does really well there, Hughes. He shows good determination to get to the byline. He's one that Wick Academy have high hopes for for the future. Going to the dying seconds here at Harmsworth Park. And there we go, Morag Perry blows the final whistle. It's finished Wick Academy 2, Bucky Thistle nil. Well, it uh, wasn't a classic, was it? Uh, but uh, in the past, we've played a lot better. And, and if you take a Brora game and lost 1 0, so all we're delighted with is that we've got three points out of it. Because we always knew it was going to be a tough game. Uh, both teams getting beat last week, so maybe a wee bit of nerves creeping in for both teams. But as I say, it wasn't a classic. Well, personally, I didn't think it was much between the two sides today. Uh, to be honest, I didn't think uh, the keepers really had any. Great saves to make. Uh, our keeper didn't, we didn't test their keeper. Uh, but they really good goal the first half and then second is a mistake. So we huffed and puffed, but we didn't do enough to win the game. So we can't really complain. It was a good goal. Uh, first one was a great goal, a great ball from uh, Richard McCarry. He spotted Davy Allen on his run and Davy took it well, so absolutely delighted. Second goal then, obviously, a wee mistake by Darren. Uh, with a header and uh, let it through his hands. Uh, first goal, it's, <coughs> if, I, if I mind right, he started at the back and then um, they started at the back and then we, then we played it to the left and then it was a through ball from Richie, really good through ball from Richie and uh, Davy with an excellent finish passed, passed it in the back of the net. So delighted from getting the goals. A lot of mistakes in the game. The game was quite a flat, like I said, it was quite a poor level game really to be honest. But, um, fair play to Bucky, they came back, they bounced back, you know, from last week's as well, they, they put up a good game for us. Um, both teams probably lack of confidence, i say, in both, both parts, but we um delighted to get three points again. Just play, played well, I thought, uh, nearly uh, keeping, the, keeping the ball, you know. Well, a few boys came back, got some uh, minutes underneath our belt, we've got people coming back. Uh, Shawnee Carroll was on the bench, he played Monday night, so it's hard to, <laughs> it's really hard to take any new to game there when we sort of huffed and puffed, never did enough to win the game, but uh, so there's not really a lot we can take out of it, we've just got to move on and move on to Wednesday. No, as I say before, we're just absolutely delighted with three points because it keeps us in the mix now and uh, we've obviously got uh, very important games coming up, uh, which uh, we're hoping you know take as many points as we can and keep ourselves up there in the top six, hopefully. 
Well, let's have a look at the Scottish Highland Football League table. Inverurie Loco Works slipped up on their travels this weekend with a 1-0 defeat at Clachna Cudden. That's allowed for Martin United and Tariff United to close the gap on the men from Harlow Park. Wick Academy move up to fifth place with that 2-0 win over Bucky Thistle. Meanwhile, a brace apiece for Connor Gethins and Robbie Duncanson helped lift Nairn County into the top half of the table with a 4-0 home win over Devon Vale. At the bottom, Rothis and Huntley shared the points after a 2-2 draw. Strathspey, Thistle and Keith also picked up a point after their goalless draw. Fort William, meanwhile, were 60 seconds away from picking up a point against Fort Martin, but conceded in the dying seconds.